Thank you, Mr. President. And not only is it a great pleasure for me to be here, but it's a particular pleasure for me to be here during your presidency. And I must apologise for the fact that, A, I had to dash straight from the House of Commons and so I'm not dressed in the correct attire. And secondly, that I'm having to dash back to London much sooner than I'd hoped to. When I was first elected as a councillor back in 2007, one of my colleagues explained to me over a pint in the pub after a meeting his experience of university back in the early 1960s. He was enormously bright, attended Cambridge and studied economics. To my surprise, he explained that at that time, around only 20% of people went to university, which is almost unthinkable in today's day and age. At that time, there were no fees. There were less institutions, less courses. But what is undoubtedly the case is that that setup was elitist. With a relatively smaller population, and only around 20% going to university, it is much easier to see why the government could afford to cut the fees of all the students. Today, we live in a different world. There are fees, there are more courses, there are more institutions, and I would argue the system is no longer elitist. Having been educated at a comprehensive school, I was the first person in my family to go to university, something my parents could only ever have dreamed of. And that is an experience that has become more and more common in recent years, and quite rightly so. A university degree should not be the preserve of a wealthy few, but I do believe that whilst access to higher education should be determined solely by your ability, not your ability to pay, it must equally be seen as an investment in you and in your future. And it's against that backdrop that the number of 18-year-olds in England who have applied to university in 2018 has reached the highest level recorded for the fifth year running and more students from disadvantaged backgrounds are going to university than ever before. So all the evidence points to the fact that the fees regime is clearly not adversely reducing the number of young people going on to study. Now, of course, in an ideal world, there would be no cost, but politics is all about choices. Personally, given the option as a constituency MP, I would rather spend more money on our schools, on our hospitals, on other less established routes through which our young people can succeed, such as apprenticeships, to help broaden opportunity. And at the end of the day, everything has to be paid for. And when I speak to young people in my own constituency, they tell me of their real worries about personal debt. And they're right to worry. If we spend beyond our means now, it will be our generation that will pay the price. And in that sense, personal debt and government debt are inextricably linked. The government has no money, it's all taxpayers' money. So whilst it might sound attractive on the face of it to exclaim an uncosted mantra of free fees for all, it will be the very same generation that, whilst benefiting in the short term, will eventually pay the price, and in the end, foot that bill through higher taxes and more borrowing. That is an inescapable fact. And that is why the current system of student finance is deliberately designed to be more progressive than the one it replaced. And generally speaking, there has been pretty broad consensus across the parties about the parameters until recently. As you will know, not only do students not pay a penny up front for their tuition, but as of this month, graduates will now only begin to pay back their loans once they earn more than £25,000, which will be adjusted in line with average incomes thereafter, putting an average of £360 back in students' pockets. As I say, I believe it is right and necessary that graduates should contribute to the cost of their higher education and that this contribution should be linked to their income. Notwithstanding that all degrees are considerably subsidised, this means that those who have benefited the most from their education repay their fair share. In fact, in descriptive terms, the current system is more akin to a graduate tax than a loan system. This approach ensures that costs are split fairly between borrowers and the taxpayer and has helped more young people from disadvantaged backgrounds go to university than ever before. It also provides a safety net in that those who have not repaid their loan after 30 years, for whatever reason, see their debt wiped off. In contrast, abolishing fees would make universities directly reliant on the government to pay for teaching. The experience of grant-funded HE systems from Scotland to continental Europe is that they struggle to maintain high enough per student funding levels to deliver high quality teaching. In Scotland, for example, the average Scottish domicile university place was underfunded by 6% in 2014-15, according to Audit Scott. In Germany, per student funding levels have fallen 10% since 2008. England has its own experience of this. In the two decades before England introduced fees, resource per student fell by over 
We could therefore reasonably expect a similar fall over time if we abolish fees today. This would lead to the closure of departments and probably whole institutions, and to the slow decline of our world-class university system, to the detriment of the country and the students of the future. I also believe the current approach ensures a competitive university market, greater choice in terms of courses, and that students have a stronger incentive to hold institutions to account for the quality of their teaching experience. As I say, a degree is an investment in you. Why should lower earners, many of whom could only ever have dreamt of going to university, foot the entire bill for that investment? Let's not forget, a university degree is worth between 170,000 and 250,000 of extra income over the average graduate's life. So it is right that they share some of this cost with a general taxpayer who may not have had the chance to go to university. But of course, we should all want to widen access, and I'm pleased the reforms and the new funding methodology have ensured that institutions are investing significantly in widening student access to higher education. In contrast, <coughs> removing fees would in all likelihood see the reintroduction of student number controls, which will disproportionately reduce attendance by poorer young people. We've seen this play out in Scotland. The Sutton Trust said in 2016, the Scottish Government's policy of avoiding tuition fees meant that it was obliged to cap university places, with particularly negative consequences for less advantaged students. Instead, as part of their access agreements, higher education institutions plan by 2017-18-19 to increase their spending on outreach, student success and student financial support measures to 735 million, up from 444 million in 2011-12. I'm also encouraged by the commitment to increasing diversity in our higher education system and giving students better value for money. I welcome that a major review across post-18 education and funding has been launched to ensure a joined up system that works for everyone. This will look at how the education system for those aged 18 and over is accessible to all and is underpinned by a funding system that provides value for money and works for students and taxpayers. It will also ensure the system incentivises choice and competition across the higher education sector and encourages the development of the skills our economy needs. But in the meantime, immediate action is being taken to help graduates. Tuition fees will be frozen at their current level and the planned rise with inflation will be scrapped while the system is being reviewed. Personally, I want to see that review carefully consider the issue of the interest rate, which is one area where I think a small change could perhaps make quite a big difference. So in concluding, barriers to access to university are four. Young people from the poorest areas are now 43% more likely to go to university than they were in 2009-10. The university system is now on a sustainable financial footing, with universities receiving 25% more funding per student than they did in 2009-10, allowing them to fund better and more responsive education. And the system is fair on both the student and the taxpayer. A university degree is worth between 175,000 and 255,000 of extra income over the average graduate's life, as I've said previously. So it is right that students share in some of that cost, along with the general taxpayer. And what I would just say in closing is that ultimately, beware the politician who promises you the world and everything in it for free.